In this lecture, we're going to look at geometric isomers. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to explain why certain molecules are geometric isomers, and you'll be able to use the terms cis and trans to distinguish between the geometric isomers. In this section on stereochemistry, we're going to come across two new types of isomers, geometric isomers and optical isomers. In this first lecture, we are going to focus on the geometric isomers. Okay, so what do I mean by a geometric isomer? How does it differ from a normal isomer? Right, if you consider these two compounds in which in both cases one of the hydrogens has been replaced by a chlorine, right, these aren't isomers because we get free rotation round about the carbon-carbon single bond. So for example, here the green balls represent chlorine atoms, the black is the carbon and the white is the hydrogen, but they rotate. Yeah, rotation. So we have the chlorine sticking up the way along the side or sticking down the way in both cases. So because we have this rotation around this single carbon-carbon single bond, these are not isomers. So since there's free rotation around the carbon-carbon sigma bond, that's that one there, these two molecules are identical and they're not isomers. However, if there's something in the structure that stops the free rotation, then geometric isomerism can arise. Now there's two things, two structural features that can stop uh, free rotation. The first one is when there's a double bond, a carbon-carbon double bond. So these are both molecules of, if you had to name them, you would say it's 1,2-dichloroethane. But they're not the same. That cannot change into that. Okay. So this is this molecule here. Okay. So we see the chlorines are on different sides. But this one doesn't rotate. So we can't get the chlorines both on the same side. So these are different molecules. These are isomers. And because they're different molecules, we need different names for, for them. They're both 1,2-dichloroethane, but we call this one trans-1,2-dichloroethane, sorry, ethene, not ethane. And this one is cis-1,2-dichloroethane. So trans means that the substituted group, the thing that's not the hydrogen, attached to the carbon, are on separate different sides of the double bond, and cis means that they're on the same side of the double bond to each other. Okay, so we have trans 1,2-dichloroethane and cis 1,2-dichloroethane. The other structural feature that can stop free rotation is a ring. Okay, so both cases here we've got cyclopropane and on two of the carbons a hydrogen has been replaced by a bromine. So we've got in both cases 1,2-dibromocyclopropane. But again, we can't change this into this. Okay, so Here's our left-hand one, where the bromines are on separate sides. And again, we can't rotate them. The ring stops free rotation. So they're isomers. In this case, the bromines are on opposite sides. This is below the ring, this is above the ring. So that makes it the trans 1,2-dibromocyclopropane. And in this case, the bromines are both below. So it's cis-1,2-dibromocyclopropane. 
So there are the two situations where you're going to get geometric isomers. If you've got a carbon-carbon double bond and both carbons have had a hydrogen removed and something else put on instead. Or a ring. The ring could be three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons uh, in the size. It doesn't really matter. And again, you can either have two substituents below the ring or or below the ring or above the ring would be the same because you just flip it over. So they both substituents are on the same side of the ring or they're on opposite sides of the ring. So how does this affect the properties of the, how much do the trans and cis vary in properties? Well the answer is not a lot, but slightly. When it comes to physical properties, you can get slight differences in melting points and boiling points. This is because the melting point and boiling point is going to depend on the, how effective the London dispersion forces are. Now the same size of molecule, so they have the same size of London dispersion force. But the London dispersion force is stronger if the molecules can pack together tightly. And in some cases, the cis and the trans version might not pack together to the same extent. One might pack together more tightly than the other, and hence London dispersion forces would be more effective at a higher melting boiling point. Chemically, there's not a great deal of difference between the cis and trans isomers, except on a few occasions. Let me just give you an example of a situation where the cis and trans isomers could have different chemical properties. Uh, a classic example is the dehydration of butyrene dioic acid. Okay. So this is the cis version where the two substituted groups are on the same side of the double bond, whereas this is a trans version where one group is on one side of the double bond and the other one is on the other side of the double bond. Now, the cis version will react, the trans won't. And that's because in the reaction, you get a dehydration reaction with the OH coming off one of the carboxyl groups and the H coming off the other carboxyl group, forming, forming this ring plus water. Okay. But if you try to apply the same reaction to this molecule, it won't take place because the OH of this carboxyl group and this carboxyl group are not adjacent to each other as they are here. So, the chemical properties of geometric isomers can vary sometimes, but on the whole there's not a great deal of difference in chemical properties. And again, the physical properties can vary a wee bit, but they're more similar than they are different to be honest. So double bond or rings can produce geometric isomers. So by now you should be able to explain why certain molecules are geometric isomers and you should be able to use the terms cis and trans to distinguish between geometric isomers.